What's up guys? Welcome to today's video where we are making amazing gluten-free donuts. I know just how hard it can be to find that perfect gluten-free recipe, but look no further, you have found it. If you like today's recipe, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up and also don't forget to hit subscribe for more great recipes. Today you will need 500 grams of gluten-free self-raising flour. 85 grams of caster sugar, 5 grams of gluten-free baking powder and also in that little bowl I have a pinch of salt and 5 grams of xanthan gum, 75 grams of unsalted butter, 1 large free range egg and 200 milliliters of whole milk. What you can't see here because between you and me I forgot to put it in our ingredients list is a 7 gram packet of instant dry yeast. Today I'm going to be using a mixer to make my donuts. It's not mandatory, but it does make the process a bit easier. It can absolutely be done by hand if you have the time. Give everything a nice whisk together. And that is not all of your dry ingredients. Silly old me, as I said, I forgot to include the yeast. I didn't forget to include it in the bake, so you will see it being added in. But don't forget to add your yeast in with your dry ingredients. Then we can go in with our wet ingredients. So adding in your milk, there's that yeast and your whole free range egg. I pop the bowl onto the stand mixer and I'm going to bring this together firstly using a paddle attachment. So either mix the ingredients together gently or pop your mixer on a low speed. So you can see over the course of about 30 seconds to a minute, the mixture really starts to come together. It's at that point then that you can turn your mixer off and switch to your dough hook. After all, donuts are essentially a brioche bread recipe. At this point, we can start adding in our chunks of butter a small bit at a time. One helpful tip would be to make sure that your butter is at room temperature. I would recommend mixing for anywhere from five to seven to even 10 minutes, depending on how your dough is coming together. You will notice some really stark differences between how this dough performs compared to your standard donut containing gluten. Gluten as a protein allows the bread to become stretchy and pliable. In the absence of that gluten, we rely on our xanthan gum and our egg as our binding agent to make this dough come together into a nice homogenous ball. And with my hands oiled, I'll take that dough out of the bowl and pop it into a separate pre-oiled container. What you use to prove your donuts is entirely up to you. I like to oil this plastic bowl and then pop it into a cake box because it avoids the need for any plastic wraps and faffing around. It just works really well for me, but do whatever works for you. And you want to leave the dough to rise in a warm place for one to two hours until it has risen. This recipe may not double in size, but that's okay. You will still get a nice fluffy donut at the end. After those two hours, you'll notice that the dough has risen. You can see my hand marks there as I push out the air. All I've done is tip the dough out onto a lightly, and I mean very lightly floured work surface. It's easy to add a lot of flour, but that will really, really quickly dry out your bake, making it almost inedible and very, very tough. So be extremely sparing with flour in your work surface. And this is the part where you will need to grab your kitchen scales and weigh out 65 grams of dough per donut. And I'm cutting the dough using a bench scraper. It might be useful to flour that utensil just to make sure that it doesn't stick because this dough can be quite sticky to work with. Once you have weighed out all your donuts, you should have about 15 balls. Next, we want to shape our portions of dough into a circular round. This is probably the trickiest part of the entire process. This dough by its nature is quite sticky and can easily get stuck to your work surface. So there is a bit of a knack to rolling these into the little circular rounds. Make sort of a claw shape with your hand and start rolling that dough between the palm of your hand and the work surface. If I just change the angle of the camera here, you can see what I mean. My hand is almost in a claw shape and I'm working that dough between the heel of my hand and my fingers. Don't worry if you don't get this right the first time, it's absolutely not going to affect the final bake. It can just make them look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Once you've rolled out all your portions of dough, we need to let them rest again for between 30 minutes and an hour. They will get slightly more airy, but again, not compared to your standard donut dough. Just leave enough space so that there is some slight room to expand. After your hour is up, you can start to preheat your oil. I am using sunflower oil and I'm heating my fryer to 160 degrees Celsius. 
Not everybody has a fryer and that's absolutely fine. You can use a candy thermometer to test the temperature of your oil if you just want to use a frying pan. And while my fryer is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and flatten down the top of my donut rounds. This seems weird considering we spent time shaping them. If you don't flatten them down before frying, you will have real trouble flipping over the donuts. I will show you a batch that I did just as a little tester to show you what I mean here. So flattening them down actually helps us to flip the donut and they will stay flipped over. I typically fry four donuts at a time and for three minutes and 30 seconds on each side or until they're a nice deep golden brown color. Frying gluten-free donuts is a longer process and it's at a lower temperature than a standard donut. And wow, they look absolutely brilliant. They are quite golden in color, but don't let that put you off. As long as they are not leaning towards the burnt side, deep golden is the perfect color that we want. Remove your donuts from the oil very carefully and turn them out onto some paper towel just to soak up any excess oil. I like to cool them on a wire rack. Once they've cooled for about five or 10 minutes, you can go ahead and dunk them into your caster sugar. This just finishes them off and makes them look so pretty and delicious. They really are irresistible and the smell is amazing. I love to fill these donuts with jam, with a hazelnut spread filling, have some fun, create something tasty and enjoy what is in my opinion, the best tasting gluten-free donut. Guys, if you like today's recipe, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, as I mentioned at the start of the video, don't forget to hit subscribe and share this video with all of your gluten-free friends. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.